Hi, welcome back. This is Ken from Ken Averson Plastering out of Vacaville, California. And we're up here in Davis, California today to do a brown coat on this remodel. Uh, we've already came in here uh, five, six feet from the corner. Uh, there used to be siding on the front of this house. They've taken the siding off and they want it stuccoed. So we're also going to go down over the existing stucco here and blend this in with the new stucco and make this look like brand new. So here we go. Um, this wall has sat here for about three days with the scratch coat on it. So it's pretty dry. So what we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of water. That should be plenty of water. You can always add more if it's not enough. That way it gives us time to float it. Otherwise it'll dry up too quick on us. Okay, here we go. So, once again, we have our hawk and trowel. And I don't know if you watched my scratch coat lesson, but we always take the try to take the mud off of the, the front of the hawk like that. Get a nice big chunk of mud on there. You go a long ways with it. Putting it on about a half inch thick before I put a Darby on it. Over here on the skim coat, it's only going on about a quarter of an inch. Just because the wall dictates that it only needs a quarter of an inch. Otherwise, I would put on more to level this out, or less, whatever it took. Need a little bit more up here. More on the joint, maybe. Okay, then we take our Darby. It's somewhat straight. You'll probably see how straight it is by looking at it. It's not a brand new one, but even if it was a new one, we'd want to bend it in just a little bit anyway. Got some rocks in here somewhere. From the top. Well, it's been raining a little bit, so the cement may have gotten a little wet at the yard. Okay, after we get it like that, make sure you wash off your Darby. Keep it clean for next time you use it. 
So we're going to let that take up maybe five, ten minutes. And over here we're going to check it. The top is ready to float and the sides. The middle is still a little dry. And we'll take our trowel. Take our trowel. Use a trowel as a rod and cut any fat off with this. Any place where it's high. Okay, this, is, this has to take up for about five or ten more minutes and then we'll go ahead and float it. And just keep on keeping on. Ezekiel, can you give me some more mud? Having a good hot carrier or plaster tender is key. Just staying on top. Sometimes you can you can double up on it and scratch it on real tight and come back in a couple minutes and put on another layer. You especially want to do that on ceilings, overhead areas. You always want to scratch it in on an overhead on a ceiling. You want to scratch it in first. Don't try to put on as much as I've been putting on here on a ceiling in one shot. You need to double up on it. Darby. It's already clean. I don't need to clean it off because I cleaned it last time right after I used it. So you see we sweep the bottom first. We sweep the bottom and we come down about a foot, a fo about a foot from the bottom with our Darby pull up. Filling any low spots.
and you can check it with the side of your Darby. The side of the Darby is perfectly straight. These are Darby as a rod. Take off any extra fat. Here we're really tight with the, the old and the new right there. It's really tight, so just do the best you can to blend those areas together. That's getting ready to float over there. This is called a neoprene float, also known as a hard rubber float. That's what we use to float. Most of the time, some guys will use a green float. This one lays it, quite, lays it down quite a bit more than a green float. The green float will bring out the sand. Your finished mud won't go as far with a green float, but with this one here, it will go a lot farther. Got some soft spots on this wall still. about does it for this segment. If you got any questions or you need any help, you can contact me via my website at aversonplastering.com.